Okay guys, welcome back to the patch. Uh, we're gonna talk about soil preparation. Um, gonna show you some clips of me just kind of laying amendments out, doing some tilling, uh, and then we'll talk about uh, how I go about approaching the soil test, how do I get the soil test, and then, uh, you know, just kind of going over and analyzing the soil, soil test, uh, what my process and thought process behind that is and uh, we'll get right into it. So with any uh, soil preparation, it starts with the soil sample itself. I use a piece of one inch uh, PVC pipe that I put a T handle on, and you can see here uh, that I set it at a depth um, right around eight to 10 inches. Um, I'm able to get several cores, and then I put them into a box to dry uh, for about three to four days before I send it off. Um, any soil uh, preparation begins actually in the fall. So what I'm showing you here is this is a plow that I use in the winter time. Uh, this is after I've cleaned out the patch, got all the debris out, and I run this plow um, through the patch back and forth. And what it does is it'll open up some channels, get a little bit of depth, and loosen up the compaction. And then I just allow the winter, uh, you know, freeze and thaw cycle to do its work naturally um, by opening up some voids in the soil. I also run this plow um, in the spring, uh, usually after we get a little bit of a dry spell and everything's uh, not frozen. Um, and it just helps to kind of lift up the soil again and also to uh, allow it to dry before I start tilling. So now we'll get into the soil test itself. Um, I get my soil test done at Western Laboratories. Um, you don't have to use them. You can use any local extension. It's probably actually preferred to use uh, a university or a agricultural extension near you um, because it'll uh, just be best fit for your soil. They're used to testing your soil in your area. I'll actually be sw uh, switching over from Western Labs to uh, a different facility uh, more close than where I am after this season. Um, the only reason I stayed with Western Labs this year was because I had three years of data on this patch. Um, so now I can switch and kind of compare how things may or may not change uh, with a different laboratory. So let's get into the soil test itself. Um, pH is where I like it at 6.8. Um, I started off with a 6.6 two seasons back and brought it up to 6.8. I don't want it to get any higher. It's okay to get up to 6.9, but I'd like to stay in that 6, uh, 7 to 6, 9 range. Um, looking at everything else, I got sandy loom soil like I talked about. Uh, my CEC is a 12. Um, you know, my nutrient levels as a whole are fairly low. Nothing that's off the chart. Um, so with it being sandy loom soil, everything kind of drains off, um, leaches out. Um, so I have to kind of treat my plants a little differently throughout the year. Um, it's more or less a read and feed, um, but I know that there's going to be lacking uh, nutrients. I also do um, tissue tests. Uh, we'll get more into tissue testing later in the season. But just kind of wanted to touch base, show you what my uh, analysis showed. And then what I do is I partner with uh, another grower. So I partner with Cecil Wesson. Um, he's who turned me onto the soil calculator several years ago. Uh, he's pretty much done all my soil tests uh, through the calculator and has helped me kind of understand um, the soil itself and how uh, nutrients and, and uh, other microorganisms and things work together. If you don't understand that part of your soil, um, it's very difficult to kind of get a grasp on a fertilizer program. It's not just simply adding nutrient A, B, or C uh, at certain times of the year. It's really understanding uh, how the plant uptakes nutrients and how that relationship is with your soil. Now, I don't just go to one resource. Uh, Cecil is fantastic, um, but I do talk to other growers and see what they're doing with their soil or similar soil types and see if that's something that I can incorporate uh, in my program and in my soil uh, if it makes sense. 
For instance, you might talk to Jeff Tile and get a response like this. Um, but, uh, um, but, uh, um, so, nope, that's not right. My honest answer, I ain't gotta do it. If it's accomplishing a goal um, that I'm striving for in my own soil. Um, you can't always go upon that because a lot of people's soils are different uh, in different parts of the country or people are doing different things to their soil, whether that's adding compost or adding uh, vermiculite like I am or adding sand. Um, you got to use uh, what you think is best for your soil and use that to work towards a goal. Don't just add something based on a big name person uh, adding it or somebody who grew a 2,000 pound pumpkin added it. Have purpose behind the things that you add to your soil and work towards a goal um, that you understand, not that you uh, are just doing because somebody else is. Okay, the patch is tilled. Um, I had to go over it a couple times just because I have a uh, in addition here, uh, right where you see these bare poles here with no fencing, uh, I got a 20 foot by 40 foot um, addition to the patch. So additional 800 square feet there. Uh, just to let you know, my patch last year was 120 feet long. So now it's gonna be 140 feet long um, between the pathways and, and pumpkin and stuff like that. I want to ensure that I can do 1,200 square feet per patch, so um, that's kind of why I added that on. If you look at the soil, uh, overall, pretty good tilth. Um, I didn't want to do as many passes as I did on the tiller. I usually only like to do two passes. Some spots I hit it two or three, so um, not bad though. Uh, That's my soil, so you can kind of see if you look real close. There's vermiculite, um, perlite, things like that in there. I didn't do perlite this year, I did perlite last year. I think I did around 16 bags of perlite for the entire patch, so roughly 4,800 square feet. And then this year I did another 16 bags of vermiculite. So the um, reason I did the vermiculite over the perlite this year I like the uh, perlite, it really drained the soil well and it did a nice job on what I wanted it to do, um, but it didn't have the nutrient holding capacity and uh, that I wanted as well as the CEC. So um, vermiculite actually has a little bit better holding capacity in my opinion and then the CEC is supposed to be higher uh, in vermiculite. So we'll see how that turns out. A little bit about my soil so my soil is not nutrient dense naturally um, as you can see from the soil test uh, my soil is a sandy loom and it uh, has a low holding capacity um, on the other side of that fence there that runs my property there's a creek there and then on the side behind me or behind the camera um, there's a large hill uh, that has water that runs down it so the water runs down that hill, carries through the patch, um, and with it being sandy loom, carries the nutrients out pretty quickly. So um, that's why I add, you know, as much as I can as far as holding capacity. Um, I don't do compost. I did leaf compost, I guess you'd call it, or leaf mulch. Um, and I spread it out along the patch. You can see there are some dark areas still there where that was where the main pile was was dropped so a little uneven there but um, overall that should help i don't want my organic matter too high um, to prevent disease and and other issues um, i think my soil test says somewhere around 2.8 uh, i don't want to get any higher to three or four so i will be resting this patch next year um, and starting another patch uh, for next year, probably this summer. And then um, I'll add compost this fall just to kind of raise my CDC, raise the organic matter a little bit, and then I'll do cover crop uh, rotation next year. Uh, probably do two or three different rotations and just to kind of see what I like, maybe do a mix. Um, but this is pretty much what I do for the soil prep in this area.
And remember, if you haven't picked a team yet, you have till June 30th to pick Team Scott for the win.